revenues to undertake some of the infrastructural um, problems facing in the country. So it's a double-edged situation. Um, you oh, said yeah. several taxes were introduced mid mid year. Uh, I doubt it. Well, well, it's it, it, the, 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 the five the five percent VAT flat rate and the luxury tax that uh, uh, was introduced for people who are importing vehicles more than a certain uh, capacity. You don't think that that was an extra tax? Well, um, uh, in a sense, I, I think the it is quite normal in in other countries that you pay what you call a uh, road road tax or. Um, so I think it's not it's not that it wasn't that unexpected, particularly when he aimed at a very high 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 end. I thought where we had difficulties were the where the, the I'm gonna go back to Etonam say shortly. So stay with us. We're gonna go back to Etonam say as he as she speaks with Gabi Asari Ochidakon, uh, a legal practitioner, leading member of the governing New Patriotic Party. Let's cross over to what I'm saying now. Continue the conversation Generally with Gabi Asari you know, month, And we expect that um, that will be responded to positively um, by, by, by the government. Now, how should that be responded to positively? Especially when you started the conversation by saying that this year's budget or 2019 budget is looking at creating jobs. If you're charging people who are earning beyond 10,000, 35 percent every month on their on their on their salaries, and um, a lot of people have lost their jobs, especially people in the banking sector, how does government intend to create more jobs and more or less give people back their jobs that they lost this year? I think first of all we have to be fair to the government. You said people are losing their jobs in the banking sector. We had a situation where those seven banks would have collapsed completely. And then you would have had about 10 times more job losses that you are talking about now. And perhaps even the 1.2 million depositors who are being saved now with some injection of about 9.9 .9 billion Ghana City, whose government did not budget for, mind you. Um, so I think really you've had a situation where a lot has been done to, as it were, arrest what would have been a very difficult situation. What would have been a very difficult situation, I agree with you on that. But is it a reality that a lot of people have lost their jobs because the Bank of Ghana took upon itself to clean the banking sector? Is it a reality? The reality is that the decision by the Bank of Ghana and the Minister of Finance has actually saved more jobs and protected the deposit of 1.2 million Ghanaians. Take us through how government intends to create jobs. As you say, we should anticipate that in the 2019 budget. How does government intend to do that? Well, I think the indicators are there. Um, if you look at, for instance, the $2 billion facility from Sino Hydro, that is going to be injected into infrastructure development, and clearly that will go a long way. Um, if you look at the, the bauxite industry, I mean, just a few months ago, this parliament passed the, the act that creates um, an aluminum integrated development corporation, which really will be the vehicle for now bringing to being an industry that could fetch anything as much as 300 to about 500 billion dollars. You know, so that itself, and I, I expect that to start next year. So that itself is good. If you look at the petroleum sector, um, there are a lot of movements there. You have BP, uh, CNOC, um, ExxonMobil, all the big players coming in. And there's a, there's a big push by this government that within the shortest period of time, which could be a decade, Ghana will be pushing like maybe a million barrels. So when you look at those things, and, and then you look at what is happening in terms of interest rates dropping. I mean, just, just last year, yesterday, we heard that um, inflation is down to 9.5% from 9.8%. You've seen this gradual reduction in the rate of inflation. You've seen this gradual reduction in helps businesses to access great credit. Is it helping businesses to access credit, like you're saying? Gabi Asari Ochidako has been speaking, a legal practitioner, leading member of the NPP, with my colleague Etonam Se, 
live from Parliament. And just to give you an indication of how the coverage will be, we're speaking to very key persons within this administration as well and, and the opposition to help us really uh, understand what's going to be happening today. And some major stakeholders who have also uh, made their way to Parliament to hear from the Finance Minister what the revenue and expenditure projections will be and policies as well in the 2019 fiscal year. Stay with us here on our various media general platforms. Let's cross over back to Parliament again and continue the conversation, my colleague Eton Amsei. Create the balance if you increase the revenue that, that you generate through taxation. Before I let you go, well, I don't think that's I, well, the attitude taxing of people. Well, I don't know about whether that has been the attitude of government. The fact that 35 percent is being charged from people who are any more than 10,000, you are taxing luxury vehicles and all that. But yeah, let's, let's move away from that. Finally, before I let you go, tell me how government intend do we have a clear roadmap? on funding the free SHS? Will it be in the budget? Will, will you be able to tell us how All government right. intends to fund right, the I free think, I think we should just wait to hear the finance minister. Those ones... No, you have no say, idea. It's not about having an idea. What is clear is that this government is committed to funding sec free secondary education, among other, other things. So I, I, I believe in this commitment, the government's commitment to this. Thank you so much, uh, Gabriel Trip Darko. It's a legal practitioner and a member of the governing New Patriotic Party. We will be speaking shortly to a former energy minister, Emmanuel Amakofi. I will be telling us exactly what his expectations are, especially from the minority side. We have come, uh, you're live on TV3, yes. 3FM, three, three and our affiliates across the country. You we're here last, uh, the mid-year budget yes. presentation, where a number of uh, uh, policies were introduced, new taxes here and there. What would be your expectations, really, uh, with what we are going to be hearing in a well, few minutes' time? Well, this is w what brought us here. This is a government that said that they are coming to power and they are going to make Ghanaians see a double-digit growth. Do we see a double-digit growth? In fact, today's budget we are going to see a real dip, decline growth. They said that they were coming into government to ensure that the private sector will boom and grow. The private sector is on its needs. The financial sector is in recession. They said that they will come into government and there will be no borrowing. You know, the NDC government left power and with less than two years, we have added 48 billion to the debt. 48 billion. What we want to find out from the minister today is that he has moved Ghana's debt from 122 to almost 170 billion in less than two years. What is he going to do to address this our debt to GDP ratio that is making Ghana an indebted country, taking us to a recession that we've never seen before? The government had talked about increasing jobs. Growth is gone. And you know the only growth we see is the oil sector growth. And you know why? The oil sector growth that we see is because of Jubilee, Ten, and Sankofa. At the time the NDC was in power, we had only one oil production. And that oil production, at the time, crude prices had dropped. And uh, FPSO, Kwame Nkrumah, was also having a problem. So we reduced oil production to 70,000 barrels. We basically had less than a billion, a billion. Guess what? They rake in 4 billion Ghana City in oil. Where is the money? We had put in systems, contingency funds, sinking funds, to address all those oil money to strengthen this economy. All of that has been basically used wrongly in wrong priorities. We set up energy sector levies. And guess what? Today we'll find out that the minister even used part of the energy sector levy to pay pensions, creating a risk for us in the power sector. Let's so talk about that. things are not good. Mm. Let, let's talk about uh, the petroleum sector, yes. for instance. Uh, prices of petroleum products uh, are going up. And when you listen to government, it says that they can't do much about it because of the price of crude oil on the world market. There are calls that governments remove taxes on petroleum products. 
Is that what you expect? Or one of the things you expect in the 2019 budget? The responsibility of government is at all times. Look at what is happening. We have had a government who has increased petroleum price. Petrol price has gone up by 17 times since the, this government took power. And remember, I, I, I'm going to be very clear because I was a, a petroleum minister. Yes, there's, dis, there's deregulation. But if you buy a gallon of petrol, 50% of the money you are paying is in taxes. And so there's a lot that government has to look at. And I'll leave you. In fact, Saudi Arabia just announced a reduction in oil production. You know what that means? That means that in the coming months, the price of uh, petrol will possibly go up. And so in this budget, it is important for the government to come out with a strategy to basically cushion Ghanaians. If you don't have control on the price on the international market, we can understand it. But there's a lot the government can do in managing the taxes. After all, we went to here when this government said that they have the magic wand to rake in revenues. Every and, and the magic one they, they talk about, I'm sure you know, in the media budget, they said if you're any more than 10,000, you're going to be paying 35%. Um, luxury vehicle has been taxed and all that. You don't think that it's a measure to rake in extra... What is it? You, should, you, you, you tell me. You, you, you no, the asking. government should tell us. It is obvious to me, if you look at our debt to GDP ratio as we are speaking today, and it's parting right now, it means that they have basically failed in all their revenue uh, uh, collection efforts. It means that this government's main campaign promise of raking... Okay, they said in the tree, and I... Sikani, what Didn't they say that? 